So, uh, I want to start with a very simple but very important statement. Ready? Design is everywhere, right? So, unless you're standing alone in the middle of the woods somewhere, everything around you was designed in one way or another. So, if you think about it, we're each in our own little museum of design at all times. Cool. My job's done. But how often do we actually acknowledge design, right? We don't think about how this visual planning process shapes literally everything around us. And why is that? Because design can be a little mysterious, right? It's kind of cool. We got the dark rim glasses on. Um, we don't get to see the people or the process behind design. We don't sort of see the result. But the funny thing is, we're very aware of the uh, <laughs> effects of bad design. I love and hate this teapot. Um, so when I'm in the airport and I'm lost, I think to myself, man, the signage in here is terrible. Uh, you might be sitting in your desk chair all day and think, man, this chair is so uncomfortable. And that's all design, right? So this lack of design awareness hit me very early in my career. Uh, I found design when I was in high school, and this light just went on. I was like, here is a way I can use my creativity and my analytical skills to change the world. There was just one small problem. My parents had no idea what design was, and they didn't want their straight-A student uh, going to art school. Um, so it's tough. Um, but my parents, yeah, they came around. They're literally my number one supporter, and I became an industrial designer. And I was lucky enough to find a mentor, Michael DeTulo. He's an awesome designer. And he, he would say to me, you know, Sam, people just don't get design. And I said, Michael, I know. <laughs> Trust me, I know. And he would say, you know, how do we, you know, what do we do about that? People don't get design, but they get music. We just listened to an amazing piece of music from Elliot. So... We know the artists, we get to see them perform, we know the instruments, we know the technology, and therefore we can appreciate good design. And so Michael would ask me, you know, how do we elevate design to that level of awareness? And my answer was to start a museum. Seemed like a good thing to do. Uh, I love museums. You can ask my wife, I'm the guy who walks around every exhibition, I read every piece of text everything. And then she is usually at the exit on her iPhone and you know, are we done here? Can we go? Um, so for me, starting a museum to educate the public about design was natural. I mean, museums are really fun places where they're safe, they're places where you can explore. And I wanted to create a museum where you didn't have to be a designer to appreciate the exhibitions and the programs. So in 2009, with my best friend, Derek Cassio, my friend Jenna Casey, and my brother, Steve, we started Design Museum Boston. And we had a ton, well, a ton, how old, we're young. Uh, we had some design experience, I'll say, some. Um, <laughs> uh, but we had no museum experience at all. So we figured the first step, let's go raise some money and get a building and let's get this thing going. So my first, I kid you not, my first proposal for the museum had a full color photo of bricks. And I was like, because we had to tell our funders, look, our potential funders, that we wanted bricks and mortar. But what happened was we hit the brick wall, right? So this was 2009. No one was funding new nonprofits. Um, but th what we did find were places like this. So this is unused retail space and underutilized public space. So we thought, man, we can flip the model of a museum, right? We can turn the museum inside out and turn the entire city into a design museum. So we put exhibitions in places where people already go. Places like City Hall, where we did an exhibition about the types of design happening in Boston. We did an exhibition at Prudential Center. This was all about the types of products and the hidden stories behind those products that you buy at retail. And you can actually go to Logan Airport right now in Terminal E and see our exhibition, Getting There, Designed for Travel in the Modern Age. So design is everywhere, therefore, so are we. So is the museum. This has never been more true than with our current exhibition, Street Seats, Reimagining the Public Bench. So it's an outdoor exhibition of new public benches on the Harbor Walk around Fort Point Channel. And I mean, we try to change every place that we go to into Design Museum Boston, even a place this large. But this exhibition didn't start as an exhibition. It started as a conversation in the Innovation District to learn from the residents, from city officials, and from businesses around how could design make this area a better place. And what we quickly found was that the Fort Point Channel is a major focal point for the area. 
and that there's a strong desire to change it into the next great public park in Boston. And so we thought we could use design to uh, launch an international design competition to design new benches for around the channel. And these benches, by the way, had to reflect the innovative nature of this area. And the response was just overwhelming. It was amazing. And these benches are inspired by materials, by Boston itself, by the maritime history of Boston. And they came from over 23 countries. So we, we received 170 entries, and we funded 17, we're actually, which are actually on the channel right now. I encourage you to walk uh, down and check them out. So it's a hands-on, or I guess, in this case, butts-on uh, <laughs> exhibition. You can actually sit on the benches and learn about the design process at the same time. So next to each bench is one of our beacons. These are illuminated signage that show the team, they show the design process and sketches. And then they connect to our mobile app via wireless network. So it pulls up videos and stories about the bench uh, right there. The other fun thing you can do with the app is actually change the color of the beacon light, which is really fun. It's a whole other layer. <laughs> and I use this all the time to mess with people. Um, <laughs> So I was walking home on this exact stretch, and there was a couple in front of me about 30 feet, and I thought, okay, I'm going to get these guys. It's like, kind of like fishing, in a way. Uh, so they were walking, and every time they took a step, I changed the color. And then they, they stopped, and they are like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> and then I was able to walk up to them and sort of you know, have a great discussion about design, right? So here are two people on their walk home, now, not thinking about design and rarely thinking about design, and we had a very intelligent conversation about design and these benches. And it kind of hit me of the profound impact that we can have on neighborhoods, but I don't think I really appreciated it until a group of developers contacted me. They're developing a, a new area in Boston, and they sort of said, we love what you did in Fort Point. Can you do some things to activate other places? And I was like, wow, these guys totally are getting this before I'm even getting it. <laughs> like, yes, because we flipped the model of a museum, we can actually have a profound impact on people's lives and make the city a more livable, vibrant place. And by the way, we can do this in cities all over the U.S., not just Boston. So that gets to the why. You know, why are we building Design Museum Boston? And I think it really comes back to Michael's example about music, right? So the more people that are aware of design and aware of the impact that it has on our life, the more they will demand great design from designers. So design that makes our lives more comfortable, more efficient, more exciting, and more rewarding. And frankly, I think the more people will know about design, the closer we'll be to a more beautiful, functional, sustainable, and happier world. Thank you very much.